town meeting, which is like, I think, uh, a first, I don't know. Um, we're just waiting a couple minutes to make sure nobody else is coming in. And what we'll do is uh, run the meeting according to Robert's rules. And if anybody has any questions or something's unclear, just stop me and we'll ask, you know, you can ask me or if I uh, have an answer, that'd be good. There's a couple of announcements. Uh, there'll be a COVID vaccination clinic here June 2nd from 1 to 4 p.m. And three types of vaccines will be offered. Uh, they don't list what they are, but we probably all know. And also, just as a protocol, when you approach the ballot box, if you could say your name to Nancy, your full name, and to Kate as she checks you out. So you'd be checking in with Nancy and dropping your, your ballot in the box and then say your name to Kate as you leave. That way everything's uh, kept pretty tidy. Um, if you're not registered to vote in Granville, could you raise your hand? Okay, that gives them an idea of who's gonna vote, who isn't. Uh, if you're a landowner or a resident of Granville, but you're not registered to vote, if there's no objection, uh, I would allow you to, to speak. So if I hear no objection, if you're from out of town and you own property here or you rent a house here and you'd like to weigh in on some of the articles, uh, feel free to do so. Um, I'm going to go through just some basic Roberts rule stuff so we know how to uh, how to organize ourselves for the articles. If they get confusing, uh, we'll know where we can stop and regroup. Uh, an article, also known as a question, must be moved and seconded by you folks, and then it has to be restated by the moderator. Uh, and then it can be considered uh, for debate and voting. Uh, anyone wishing to speak on the question must raise their hand and be recognized by the uh, moderator. I'd like you to keep your comments to three to five minutes. Uh, everyone will have a chance to speak twice uh, on the question that's being debated and we have to stay focused on the question that's germane uh, at the time where it's moved to the floor. Um, and I'll call on you a second time after everyone else has had a first chance to speak. So again, you must confine your remarks to the merits of the question that's under debate. You can't all of a sudden ask about the telephone poll that they're gonna put on Route 100. Um, is anything clear so far? Good. I get confused. Uh, debate may be cut off by a motion to call the question. So as we go forward, um, if that motion is made, it has to be followed by a two-thirds majority vote to stop the debate. If there's, of course, no objection to that motion, uh, debate ceases and we will call for a vote. Uh, when debate has ended, I will restate the motion and make sure everyone knows uh, if they vote yes or no, what that will mean to the question. And if there's any doubt, just stop and say, you know, could you say that again? Or, you know, we want to make sure everybody understands what their vote means when we, uh, have the, we're debating the question. <laughs> In most cases, we can we can use VoIP or hand voting. Uh, paper ballots have to be cast for listers, auditors, select board members, and elected road and water commissioners. We don't have a water commissioner yet, but maybe some. Also, Robert's rules can be modified by a motion from the assembly. Uh, that requires two-thirds of the majority vote. And if I do anything that seems unfair or if I'm cutting somebody off unfairly, uh, just let me know. I mean, I, 
I think also looking at some of the articles that we have to go over uh, tonight, it, again, unless there's an objection, maybe we can have a little debate if it's uh, you know reasonable and nobody's getting angry at anybody. As long as it goes forward, that's my main thing. So uh, I'm going to hand the the the. Uh, no, no, you didn't last year. I didn't. I, I don't really have to actually. You don't have to. I think you okay. <laughs> Go right in. Right? I'm looking for the somebody want to move article one. Judy. And we need a second. Uh, Article 1, to elect all town officers as required by law. Uh, a, to elect a moderator for a one-year term ending 2023. Do I hear any nominations? Two. Thank you. Are there any other, any other, anybody else interested in moderating? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All in favor of me, you can say aye. 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 Okay. Consider it for next year, though. It's a, it's kind of fun, sort. One uh, B to elect a select person for a three-year term ending 2025. Nominate Bruce Second. I nominate Dan Sargent. Second. Who who did the second? Great. So, Maureen, Dan Sargent. Anyone else? Nomination seats. Seven. If there's no objection, we will close nominations. And we'll cast a paper ballot for Daniel or Bruce. Yes? Can I ask that each of them uh, make a statement about why they would oh, be selected? Oh, sure. Daniel, you want to? Give us a little. Sure. Yeah, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Dan Sargent. I've been a fire chief in Granville since 2013. Uh, I've been serving the town since I was 16 years old, volunteering my life away. Uh, you know, I'm a sixth generation Granville resident. And you know, Granville's home to me. And just looking to serve in whatever way I can. Uh, Bruce? Yeah, I've been here for a few years um, overseeing a lot of different projects. We had the post office come to town years ago. And the steeple got renovated. Got a historic grant for that. Um, we've got 300 people in this town. We need more volunteers. We need more people to participate in our democracy and uh, get involved. We're, really needing people on the Planning Commission, the Conservation Commission. Um, we would uh, certainly like to you know, continue to move this, this town forward. Um, it's a great place. Um, I certainly have a background been in the legislature back in the 90s, and I've been doing this the school board back for almost 10 years, 2000. Um, and I, I, I'm concerned a little bit that um, um, Cheryl Sargent and Nancy Sargent Needham and Dan Sargent are working uh, uh, this town, and I'm a little bit concerned about that, and uh, I, you know, I would like to continue as, uh, as a select person, and I uh, would uh, appreciate your support. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So we'll uh, provide a paper ballot and cast your vote. Does everybody have paper? <laughs> there's paper scattered around the okay. room on the windowsill. Yeah. Cheryl says there's paper on the windowsills if you need it.
The results are in. Daniel had 13 votes and Bruce had 38. So Bruce is in for another three years uh, to 2025. Congratulations. Uh, let's see. 1C, to elect a town clerk for a three year term ending 2025. Do I hear? Cheryl? Any other nominations for town clerk? I move the nomination seats. If there is no objection, we'll close nominations. And would someone like to make a motion to call for a paper ballot? No. One ballot? One ballot. One, one, one paper ballot. So moved. So, so moved. Okay, so if there's no objection, we'll file one paper ballot for Cheryl Sargent for town clerk for the year ending 2025. Congratulations. Uh, 1D, to elect a town treasurer for a three year term ending 2025. Nancy Needham has been nominated and. What's her name? Seconded it. <laughs> and who's what's and his name? Master. Was that who was the what? Nancy. Name? Nancy Needham. Oh, 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 oh. who was the second? <laughs> okay, Nancy, Nancy D. Oh, okay, Nancy, Nancy Demers. <laughs> okay, Demers. <laughs> oh my uh, god! Again, uh, anybody want to make a motion to cast one paper ballot? We do have to do this though. Okay. Yep. And second? Second. Yep. Thank you. If there's no objection, we'll file one paper ballot to elect Nancy Needham, town treasurer, for three year term ending 2025. Congratulations, Nancy. She wished she could be here. She just did email me and, and she'd had other obligations, but she's very happy to run for the position. 1C, oh, 1E, e, I'm sorry. To elect a third auditor for a three-year term ending 2025. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Second. Are there any other? <laughs> it's kind of fun hanging out with you know Robin and Nancy. Another Nancy. Another Nancy. I just call everybody Nancy, but. Uh, <laughs> Yes. And someone second, second that. that. Uh, nominations have ceased. Uh, Roger Staus uh, was nominated for the third auditor for a three year term ending 2025. Um, and if there's no objection, we'll just throw in one paper ballot. 1F to elect a first constable for a two year term ending 2024. Okay, so there's a, a motion uh, to table uh, 1F and seconded to vote on it after we vote on Article 2. Just a, just a note on, just on the note on the constable. You've got to have a constable regardless. Um, so you could do it either way, I suppose. But right. regardless, you have to elect a constable. Other than that. I have no problem moving tabling that to after Article 2. It, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any objection to moving it to after Article 2? I do have an objection. I have oh. a question. <laughs> uh, go ahead. I was just wondering, should we table G for the second constable for one year, and if that was strictly only an East Granville person and they already fall under what we may or may not do in Article 2? 
I can't really answer that question, but uh, maybe I could, yeah. I could probably answer that. It, it could be either way. The second constable generally has been the East Scramble person, and the second constable in my 30 some years has never been certified. So if they're not certified, they would be in the law enforcement anyway. But so I guess you could do it either way. Okay. Just checking to make sure we don't have to. Yeah, well, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, so it's been. Yes? Yes. Right. Anybody else have a question before we vote on tabling? So there was a motion to table and a second, and there's no objection, so we'll vote on our, uh, 1F after Article 2. So that's approved. And I'm looking for someone to move Article 2. Are we going to do Oh, oh, yeah, right. Thank you. <laughs> 1G, to elect a second constable for a one-year term ending 2023. Nominated Jeff Lumber. Jeff Lumber has been nominated. Second. And seconded. Any other nominations from over the... Mountain? Second. If there's no objection, we'll close nominations for second constable and cast one vote for Mr. Lumbra. One H to elect a delinquent tax collector for a one year term ending 2023. Yep, go ahead, Doug. Um, because Nancy is a treasure, is that a conflict? Um, being a delinquent? No, it isn't. I just asked that question. No. Okay. No, no, it's, it's totally up and up. We do have a chart here, but I, I, I've checked it, and I, unless I missed something. No. Mm -hmm. So it's good. Uh, well, you can't be an auditor and a select person, so yes means it's good. It's it's fine. Yeah, no, go ahead. That a question for the select board? Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, because I don't have an Is answer. Is this something they want to do or thought about or not? Maybe. I don't think it's ever come up, really. You were having to do the past. Uh, I think there's something to do with some of the penalty or whatever that may go to the town rather than if you're both treasurer and uh, delinquent tax collector. Yeah. So um, we'll certainly keep an eye on that. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, so we still have to vote for Nancy, so I would ask that we cast one paper ballot if there's no objection and call Nancy Needham our delinquent tax collector for a one-year term ending 2023. One I, to elect a third cemetery commissioner for a three-year term ending 2025. So I'm not sure who we're losing. Uh, sure I'm, I'm current. Oh, okay. Yeah, my turn's up. 
do want to be chef? Sure, if they want me. So I, I nominate Cheryl Sargent. I second. Okay. Judy second? Yep, Judy seconds. And uh, nominations uh, to be closed. Do I have a second on that? Everybody in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? There we go. Okay, so we're now going to uh, uh, move Article 2. So does someone? And we have a second on that. Article 2 has been moved and seconded, and it reads, shall the town of Granville vote to prohibit constables from exercising any law enforcement authority pursuant to 24 VSA chapter 193, uh, 1936A. Uh, well, generally the person who has moved it starts. Yep. Judy. Judy, I'm sorry. Um, I, 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 I'm sorry to introduce you. Okay, 30 more seconds, but protocol, had I known you were going to read something, it, that's not allowed, actually. You can't read something, but it's fine because you had this prepared, but you have to wrap it up very quickly now. Yeah. Okay. seven plain constable duties. I have a list here if anyone's interested. 
I think we should go back to having a plain old non-enforcement constable. And by the way, um, an attorney at VLCT recently told Roger that he's noticed a trend for towns to remove the law enforcement aspect from their constable duties. Last thing, finally, I suggest we have something like a budget account to pay that plain constable, something like per task or per hour. That's it. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up my comment, Robert's rules, and I'm not sure why, don't allow the assembly to read from a paper prepared comments. You have to, you know, memorize them. But in this case, it's, a, you know, it's fine. Just so everyone else knows that. Okay. Are there, Mark? All right. So just some clarification of some things here. I'm not sure where Judy did get her information. Um, I originally started, like a report said, in 85, which I was certified as a law enforcement officer back in 85 have been ever since. I was away for a few years in the service. When I came back in 92, I got recertified again, and I have been the constable since then, as I said in my report. So I have been certified. Uh, I wouldn't be doing the job if I wasn't. And in 2012, I believe it was, the state mandated that if you did do law enforcement, you needed to be certified, okay? So um, my job is a part-time job. Um, I have no benefits, no retirement, none of that. I work when I can, and that's where, where I reflected the salary being set down. This is a stipend for an average hours, average hours. It's not necessarily a set hours, but so, if anybody has any other con concerns, they can be more freely to talk to me. Now, if this passes and law enforcement authority is reduced, the constable, whether it's me or somebody else, cannot respond, will, cannot respond legally to any complaint because that would be a law enforcement authority issue. Whether it's a suspicious vehicle, an alarm going off, whatever, that would be a law enforcement function, okay? Just to clarify, everybody's aware of that. Most nights, I'm home. So if I needed to, I could, okay? It's not uncommon for VSP to call me, and I go somewhere, okay? No big deal. Um, what's the other thing that's gonna bring up? Car insurance, that was brought up. My standard car insurance is $600 less if I buy standard car insurance. Well, I have to have a vehicle to do the job, and it costs extra. My regular insurance would not cover me with lights on my car. Firemen technically take a risk by having red lights on their car as well. Uh, anyway, that's the cost of that. Um, let me see if there's anything else I want to bring up. So, any other questions for me? Got anybody else thought of? I'm sure that's a couple things, but I, I don't want to take up any more time. You're perfect. Any? Yeah, Sean. Uh, I looked at the, uh, all the reports of Mr. Colinas from law enforcement. And the, I also looked at the budget on fiscal year, what we're in right now. And as of the end of fiscal year, the total amount is $13,159. Town, our taxpayers paying for the law enforcement in town. I also looked through all the patrols, and out of 10 months, three months, law enforcement was one day a month. Four months, it was two days a month. So I looked at it, so four, you know, two, four, six, eight, nine, 11 days out of seven months, I really don't think. $13,159 is worth the limited coverage for law enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, unless there's, uh, I have Danny has a question. Comment. Does anybody have any friends or family that live in Hancock and Rochester? Never since they pulled their constable down there, know how much Rochester and Hancock is paying for the sheriff's department to come over and patrol the valley. To, you know, it's a lot more than what we're paying Mark if we have the sheriff come over here. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I'd also like to add, I, I, uh, 
I completely see the worry with what we might be paying for the law enforcement. But I will say that I think that on the other side of it, with what you were saying, paying a sheriff, for, for us over in East Granville, speeding is a big issue. And even if Mark comes over a couple of hours a month and turns his lights on to some people that are flying down 12A, past, our houses are literally eight feet from the road, just like these houses right up here in Granville. And uh, so when someone's speeding by, our houses shake. So it's really important to us to have someone there with the lights on and reminding everybody. I think we'd all be pretty hard pressed to get the state police to run radar on 12A or even right here in Granville um, or <laughs> hiring the sheriff. Um, so that's something that is really important to me with pets and, and kids and uh, I think that's something we should consider. Uh, Christy, do you and then? I was just wondering if we're computing law enforcement to track trucking, because if you have an actual emergency and you call, you get to a mill. If you are driving to the school board meeting last Tuesday and almost get hit <laughs> right in front of the black floating shop by two cars that were pulling in half a year, you know. It was a man one and the family and the other. They were trying to catch him fast. And they were right in my side of the road. So again, 11 days, there's a lot of traffic here that doesn't happen on Thanksgiving weekend or Memorial Day. Or, and now that I drive to Rochester for work every day, the guy is there in Hancock and in Rochester trying to get those of us that are going to work at 7.30 in the morning because they're over there that early. So again, not a Friday night thing, not when things are happening. It's Something. Yeah, I mean, just, just enlighten you a little bit here, too, just, just to come back on that. It, uh, like I say, I, I'm not always in town like everybody else. I'm human. I have things to do as well. But uh, one thing I will mention is, as you mentioned yourself, DSP, suspicious vehicles, they're not coming over for that. They might call me and see if I'm available to check on it, and I can if I'm around. Um, they're not coming over for something like that, because by the time they get here, it's long gone. Addison County, don't even think about contracting them. They are not available. They are short staffed just like everybody else. They are not looking for any new contracts. Just put that out there so you're aware. If the constable here, whether I work whatever hours, it's better than none. Um, that's all I can say. Also, you gotta look at the budget as about half of that budget is cost. Um, we have to maintain records. We have to have you know, certified radar. Uh, we have to have all that stuff that we have to report, mandatory reporting to the state. Some of that stuff is part of the expense, okay? Uh, and then that's the computer system. You know, a lot of our stuff's on the computer system. That, that's how we have to do it. That's, that's why their cell services use as the computer has to work. 
Everything out there today, <coughs> law enforcement, it's all computer based. Okay, and then Jennifer. I'm just curious because I thought Danielle brought up a good point. She said, What does it cost to have the sheriff come to Rochester and Hancock? And I'm wondering if we actually know that figure. Yeah, that's a good question. 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 Yeah, that's a but then the last word was, as Mark said, they are short staffed and cannot and will not, would not uh, provide, would not contract for their services. For I can answer that probably. Uh, yeah, I'm going to allow Mark just to respond. Just, just to add, that. I don't know what Addison gets, uh, and I'm not 100% on Windsor County, but for instance, Windsor County. Last I understood, it was like $60 an hour plus mileage, so. Uh, hang on, Danny. Uh, yeah, Marilyn. Uh, I'm not going to read my prepared statement, but I'm going to read Mark's report. Uh, briefly, please. I, okay. Again, it says, as, a, as these are not my prepared statements, this is from the town report. Mm -hmm. So, as I'm sure everyone is aware by now, I keep busy with my full time job in the Windsor County Sheriff's Office. This keeps me very busy in summer months, and I'm not around as much as I am in the winter months. I'm still available for the town family to do my school patrols if I have to do it when available. You may also call me for any issues. You can email me. Sometimes email is the best way to reach me for law enforcement. Remember, <laughs> if it is an immediate law enforcement concern, you should always call the Vermont State Police. They are still the primary law enforcement for this town. I will go over the monthly reports as well. And I don't want to uh, put Mark's efforts down, and I know there's a lot of activities that support uh, law enforcement in general that are not necessarily patrol, like downloading software or doing the video Zoom training or attending meetings. Those things are in the, in the reports and the total number of hours logged uh, so far until the end of April uh, is just short of 130 hours. So last year's report, uh, there was an increase in salary to $8,000. A check of $665 is cut every month whether or not hours of work. Um, but the logs do reflect that Mark doesn't have the time. So in saying that, that there is not enough time for adequate law enforcement or timely response in a lot of cases because he's working, does not that prove that we don't really need that service for $13,000 a year? And Next year, it's four thousand. This coming up fiscal year, four thousand dollars in equipment, um, six hundred dollars in automobile insurance, including that does not include fifty-eight cents a mile, the mileage reimbursement, twenty dollars a month in cell phone. Um, you know, in addition to the monthly salary that is given at the beginning of the month before the logs even created. So whether work is done or not, no matter what the work whether it's a patrol or attending a meeting online or downloading software or doing paperwork, it's still the salary. So it just speaks to whether or not we as voters want to support law enforcement at such an astronomical cost for so few hours. Is it worth it? I'm voting yes to prohibit law enforcement on Article uh, we'll go with um, Rhoda, and I'm then... I'm just wondering if the town is willing to um, have law enforcement if it was another person uh, taking Mark's place, um, that the person that people might think they were Good luck. getting more yeah. out of. That would be a question for the select board. Oh, okay. Good luck. Yeah. And when, does, when, does that, when does that happen? I mean, when does that question come up? Well, when, when we elect a constable. 
So I have not heard anybody in town wanting to be constable of the more. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm trying to get through. Everybody has a chance to speak before I call on you again. Like I, I, I understand. Uh, go ahead, Travis. Yes. It kind of seems like everybody's leaning towards defunding the police. <laughs> this has been like a big subject lately. I mean, once it's gone, it's gone. And I mean, how often are the sheriffs going to be around here? I see Mark quite a bit over here. And I mean, but the sheriffs and you call the police and stuff, they're not probably usually going to come. Thank you. Do we really want to defund the police? And Mark's law enforcement has been doing this for a long time. I think he's doing a really good job. Thanks, Travis. Jim? I'd like to call the question. I second. We have a motion to call the question, and it's been seconded. It's also, I would suggest a paper ballot. Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> The people still want to speak, Jim, so the question's been called. There's a second. Is there an objection to calling the question? I'd like to say one more thing. So we're going to table that. and you, Go ahead, Danny. Um, I don't know how we're looking at the last two years worth of what Mark has done when it was COVID years, and you couldn't get out of your vehicle or pull anybody over or go up to anybody's windows. Even the state police and the sheriffs weren't doing that. There's been no law enforcement control in the last two years because of COVID. So why are we looking at the last two years of Mark's time when we should be looking at two years before that when he was actually patrolling when there wasn't a reason not to? Mr. Mother, just a point. If someone's speaking, could they talk louder or stand up, please? Oh, sure. Did everybody hear? Michael? I, I heard Danny fine. That's, <laughs> That's why. Uh, let's see. I'm going to. There is a motion on the floor, and it's been seconded to call the question, but there's still discussion. It would take a two thirds vote of the assembly to call the question. I'm assuming we still want to discuss this a little bit. Christy. I just would like to go back to my first question is by law enforcement, are we looking at ticket writing, or are we looking at coming to an abandoned car, coming to your house because you called and you have a concern? I mean, the lady from East Granville was wanting you to be there to slow cars down in front of her house. What he does for us is slows cars down in front of the town hall. So I guess I'm looking for a clarification of what the law enforcement is going to be doing. I'm not trying to be fun to the police, and I'm just saying if what we're looking at is if we were going to hire someone else, we'd be having to sit and write tickets, like I was saying, in Hancock and Rarenville. I mean, in Hancock and Rochester. Are we, what, what more are we looking for that we don't feel that we're getting than ticket writing? And just to be clear, uh, everyone, we're talking about, uh, you know, in this article, it's not funding, it's uh, removing the constable's ability to exercise law enforcement. So that's what we're. We're focusing on this article. You know, the budget has the funding. Uh, Doug. Yeah, I think that is part of the question. What is this role as, as law enforcement? You know, is it traffic control like Christy said on the way? Is, is it, you know, if I have a problem in my house, can you help us? Um, I think we have to define it somewhat. And as far as the salary, the monthly salary, if people are concerned about it, then maybe we do an hourly salary, not a lump sum every month. It's what he, what he can afford to kind of do it. I, I don't know if we want to do a, one lump sum for his actual salary. Because I, I, Mark, I don't think you, you don't know how the time to do it. Thank I, you. I don't know if you can, yeah, that's my concern. Yep. Uh, Victoria. Um, question. Didn't we purchase the radar? That the equipment that sits up here in the mileage, doesn't that correct? That, that, was, a grant, that was a grant. That was a grant. That was free. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that was a grant. <laughs> yes.
You know, I'm sorry, but I, I don't. Uh, could you state your name? Because I'm. Bia Oh, okay. Bia. Uh, that's a question for. Richard? Uh, Mark, do you have any, or does anyone have any idea of how much the uh, law enforcement has increased in price in the last 10 years? Well, I, I, I don't know. Well, no, I would just say, Richard, you know, we're, we're not talking about financials right now. We're talking about his ability to perform okay. law enforcement. So that would be a budget item, you know, a question related to when we discuss the budget. Um, anyone else? Virginia? Uh, I guess I'm just looking for a clarification on the duties of the job, like law enforcement versus non-law enforcement stuff. So if there's no law enforcement, Right. Yeah, there is a motion to call the question, so as soon as we want to end this, we'll vote on it. Uh, let's see, Mike, you haven't spoken yet. Yes, you know, if you have someone that's not certified, Mark, can you tell us um, are, are your insurance, is there insurance? In other words, when you're responding to a call, are we as a town protected with some insurance because you're certified? Being, being certified uh, that definitely covers the town. If somebody's not certified, uh, and of course I'm covered by the town for liability reasons, um, but if someone's not certified and they do law enforcement practices, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen, no matter what it is. If somebody slips and falls, and, or they get held back and they get injured, whatever it was, whether it was not intended, obviously, but especially now with all this uh, stuff going on in law enforcement about um, Force, use of force. So, Judy, you had a follow up question? Well, to answer Virginia's question in B, I think, yeah. um, as I mentioned, there are seven non law enforcement duties that a constable. Um, you could just stand up and say yes. Yeah, actually, yes, thank you. Yeah, and I'm going to read them. As I, as I said, I have a list. If there's no objection, okay, okay. read it. Uh, and, now we've got um, mm -hmm. and this is, you know, per statute. Um, let's see. Says a town may vote at spe special or in town meeting to prohibit constables from exercising any law enforcement authority. B. Notwithstanding the provisions of A, constables may perform the following duties. And this would be what is a non-enforcement law enforcement constable that every town is required to have. One, the service of civil or criminal process under DSA law. Two, destruction of animals in accordance with the provisions of law. Three, the killing of injured deer under statute. Uh, four, provision of assistance to health officer in the discharge of the health officer's duties. Five, service as a criminal division of the superior court officer under section law. Six, removal of disorderly people from town meeting under <laughs> blah, blah. Seven, collection of taxes when no tax collector is elected as provided under. So I hope that answers. Uh, let's see, Daniel, we haven't heard from you yet. So, regardless of whether or not Mark can exercise law enforcement authority, the state police are still going to respond to emergencies here in town. Nine times out of ten, that's the case right now. Uh, the issue at hand is not whether or not we need law enforcement. All that goes the same things a lot of people have said here tonight. We do need law enforcement here. I, I can name a number of instances just in the upper village, you know, that really concern me as a taxpayer. We need law enforcement here. That's not the question. The question is, we're spending about $13,000 a year 
available. So what do we do about that? I'm hoping that the select board and Mark are hearing, regardless of the outcome of this vote, the concern of the voters in that we're paying for something we're not getting. That's it. There is a motion and second to call the question. Do I hear a resounding yes, we'll call the question, or do we still want to debate? Yes. 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 Okay. Say again? Yes. All in favor of calling the question, say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Okay, the question's been called. Um, debate has ended. And Judy? I make a motion we have a paper ballot. Okay. And it's seconded. And if there's no objection, we'll do a paper ballot for Article 2. Just to remind everyone. Yes? Oh, okay, yeah. Just to review, on the paper ballot, if you vote yes, you vote in favor of Article 2, which reads, shall the town of Granville vote to prohibit constables from exercising any law enforcement authority pursuant to 24 VSA chapter 1936A. So if yes vote, that passes. A no vote, it doesn't pass. Is that, is that clear? So okay. a no vote, we keep it the way it is, and the yes vote, we change it. Correct. Yep. Shall the town of Granville vote to prohibit constables from exercising any law enforcement authority pursuant to 24 VSA 1936A? Yes, 19, no, 28. So the constable's law enforcement ability remains intact. There you go. Do you want to keep some of these? Sure. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. So now we go back to to we're going back to Article One to elect all town officers as required by law. One F to elect a first constable for a two-year term ending 2024. And there was a motion, I believe, for Mark which was seconded, and are there any other uh, nominees? nominees? Well, nomination ceased. Second. We got a cease to nominate and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Uh, and I suggest we cast one vote. All in favor for Mark Belisle as a constable for two years, term ending in 2024. I. What? I object to that. You object to what? Casting one vote. There's only one person. Yeah. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah. we can't, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> if there were two people, you, you could object. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So now I'm looking for someone to move Article 3 to the floor. So move. I'll move to Article Yep. Article Second. Three. Article 3. We have Mark moved Article 3 to the floor. Is there a second? Second. Michael, second. Article 3 reads, shall the town of Granville vote to accept the budget of three, uh, $377,064 to meet expenses and liabilities of the town and authorize the select board to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same. And this is where we enter into discussion. Unless I hear otherwise. Jim? And Jim, Jim, could you stand up? Thank you. Not quite sure, Jim. I've been the de facto road commissioner, and uh, you know, I can go over the road budget. You know, I know you've been involved some. Ken has also been involved, um, but um, it's all detailed out here. If you're talking about a written report that we probably just would remiss on. Just for my. Uh, sure, Jim, go ahead. But it's this about the budget, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. So, I have a problem with cutting the road budget. Um, particularly considering the inflation that we've got going on. Um, the price of diesel is more than the I think they're going to see the exposed kind of expenses increase. Uh, I don't know if anybody was given the hourly rate on equipment yet, but yeah, as you well know, we, uh, we hire that stuff out. Um, the other part of it is that our, I don't see the very potholes down in the village there for the whole year now. I don't see where that's in the budget account. Uh, that's pretty much all I need to say. I would like to see it, you know, not cut, at least stabilize it like last way. Hey, Jim. Jim. Uh, well, I'm sorry, just for clarification, could we just point out what the um, account number is and what you're actually... I'm looking at the bottom line. We're, we're on page, uh, what page 12. Is? Page 12. Page 12, okay, thanks. And the bottom line of our road budget did go down $12,800 in the proposed budget. Um, but you got to understand that we closed out the year before, or closed out the year with a $35,000 surplus. We also have, um, uh, prior to that, um, $32,000 in the previous two years of surplus. So in our road budget right now, we've got we've got sixty six thousand dollars or so carried forward, um, which has to stay in roads, can't be used for anything else, and uh, there's a question as to whether or not we should continue to put that in or to lower the tax rate um, by the surplus. And we've always carried that forward for emergencies and for other work. And you're right, Jim. We contract everything out. 
we are at the mercy of contractors. And that's not an easy thing. You know, we're one of, you know it's, it's tough to get people to plow our roads, to uh, do the work on our roads, to fill those potholes. Um, we um, get as many grants as we are eligible to get. And uh, we do have uh, money that we uh, have had carry forward. So, um, you know, one thing we've cut back on is the sand pile. We haven't gone through as much sand, and we could debate whether or not we use too much or too little uh, sand. But we don't need to get another 1,000 yards of sand this year because we've got a lot of sand already piled there. Um, we've got 2,500 yards or so of gravel uh, that we've already paid for that hopefully we'll get down in the next couple of weeks. But again, that, that, that again will be something that will carry forward. So, um, you know, we're working as hard as we can to keep these roads. I know we had a terrible mud season, but so did all of Central Vermont. Had a terrible mud season. And we continue, you know, Kenny's done a great job, you know, with uh, grading and putting fabric down and rebuilding some of the roads. Um, and I, I think our roads are probably about as good as any of our neighbors. So, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's a real challenge, and, and we've got real challenges getting contractors <coughs> to get the work done. Doug. Uh, is, is there a proposal to do any tarring or paving in any of this? Good. Post Good. office and even going on National Hill has been, I mean, not, hasn't been done since I've been around, to be honest. And both those areas seem to me should be done with such bad potholes there. Not even talking about potholes on the Yeah, we, we have got, um, I thought they'd be done by now. We've got to get the sand swept off those pavements. It hasn't been done yet from the winter. Uh, we've got the contractor that, that I thought would already have it done. He's also going to do filling in those potholes. We, we have a reserve fund for paving that's dedicated for paving, but we've got $12,000 in it right now, and we're probably looking at 60, 70, who knows what the price of uh, oil now, what, what that's going to cost, probably close to $100,000 to do our... It was 53000 Right, so... Price diesel fuel has gone up. Right, so, you know, Kevin does this too. I, yeah, you're probably close to $100,000 to, to pay the pavement that we have. Post Office Hill, bottom of Maston Hill, <laughs> Buffalo Farm, the bottom. Judy? So and if you could stand, please. If we can't, uh, is it that expensive? We have we have that up right now for a contractor to do that, and it just hasn't gotten to it just yet. You know the asphalt plants have opened up for a few weeks now, and uh, I would hope they would be done by now, but they haven't been. Ken, I don't know if you want to add anything. Uh, he was going to do it last last fall, but it must be quite close on before he gets done. Right. Yeah. No, they got to get done. I know people. Mm. Avoiding them, driving on people's front lawns to get around these, these they're, they're worse than potholes, or, you know, yeah. The asphalt. Yeah, please, please, please stand so there's some people who can't hear. The, uh, I was told the asphalt was 90 to $95 a ton for the going right nowadays. It's just gone up like everything else. Um, probably Yes. Um, I guess my only comment is if we do, Bruce, you mentioned that we have like 60000 right now in a fund from unused from the previous years. If people are interested in getting those areas paved and they're going to be a huge expense, if we don't cut the roads budget down the 12000 could that money that then goes into that reserve be used for that as a project over time if people want that money to be used for something like that? Well, we, we could decide to pay them, you know, with, with the money that we have, for sure. Oh, okay. You know, um, yeah. 
So if that was like a reason to not want to cut the budget in case that's like an expense that we want to keep saving up for. There's a question later on to add another six thousand dollars to pavement. So somebody could have meant that to make it a hundred thousand dollars and get it done, you know, but uh, <laughs> Any other questions on the... Yes, Jim. Within this budget that you are listed, do you have any funds in there that are targeted for a mud problem? Yeah, I, Jim, I, we're, we're attacking. I know um, Richard Poole, a couple of years ago, went out and did a great job mapping. Uh, Ken and I are still looking at um, the worst spots, you know, the, 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 uh, the stretch on Puddle Duck is uh, where there's a spring. Uh, Ken, I don't know if you want to get it, you know, we've got over 2,000 yards of gravel that are already paid for in this year's budget. It's already been paid that um, with fabric and um, some stretches of the worst parts of the road um, is going to get attention. And by the end of June, right, Ken? Correct. So that gravel is staying in the yard. That, gra that gravel is down at the bowl mill with our name on it. And I hope we can use I hope we can use every drop of that gravel by June 30th in this fiscal year. I I'd be very happy if we didn't have anything to carry forward. Let's get it on the roads. Bring your puppies. Okay, there's a motion on the table to accept Article 3. It's been seconded. Any more discussion or amendments or any questions about the budget? The question's been called. All in favor of accepting... Well, let me I gotta read it. Hold on. Shall the town of Granville vote to accept the budget of $377,064 to meet expenses and liabilities of the town and authorize the select board to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 3 passes. Thank you. Do I have a second? Thank you. Article 4 reads, shall the town of Granville vote to authorize the treasurer to apply any surplus remaining from the highway budget's current physical year, fiscal year into the highway capital investment fund? Questions have been called and seconded. All in favor of Article, article 4 say aye. Aye. Opposed? And someone moved. Move article five. Seconded. And seconded. Article five. <laughs> article five reads. I'm reading here, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> article five. Shall the town of Granville vote to increase the highway capital investment fund in the amount of six thousand dollars for purpose of repaving town roads? Any discussion about that? You said there's, you said there's 36 feet. I'm sorry. I think there's twelve thousand dollars in that um, paving that we're going to attach holes. And this would, it, this question's been on for a few years to just try to build up a fund so we can pave the entire road. But six thousand dollars doesn't even make up for the cost of asphalt for the last couple of months of what we need because it's gone so high. Well, I mean, that's for you. these folks to, you know, I think we've heard it's probably close to $100,000 to pave those roads, just where there's pavement now. Uh, this year, we, like I said, we'll fill the potholes. That'll help for hopefully a while. Um, but those roads are going to need pavement at some point. Uh, Judy was next, and then I, I see Sean. I only want the clarification that we're talking of when we say repaving town roads, that but Bruce answered it. We are only talking about existing pavement. Exactly. 
And Doug, you were next. At six thousand dollars, putting money into it, we got eight thousand dollars into it. I, I mean, when, when you get, I'm just saying, I know you're going to fix the pothole. How long is it going to take us if we want to do it? It's going to be ten years from now. Is it twenty years to get that six thousand dollars well, a year? I think, I think, I think when we first started a couple of years ago, we were thinking sixty thousand dollars or so. You know, and over ten years, but now I think the cost is at least double that to pay our roads. Well, that, that would certainly be something that we could do, is just go out and ask yeah, the town. Yeah, yeah. John, and then, then John. Can't the town take, uh, when we have $60,000 in surplus, take $20,000 out of that surplus and put it into this fund here? Can we do that now? We, we could use that. We could use $60,000 to pave the roads in addition to this twelve. dollars to be 18, I guess, so it could happen. Maybe the town should hear a figure and put it right into this fund right now. This is a warned article right. that adds to the total. Okay. That would be a suggestion asked. for another. Yeah. Right. Uh, Jim was next, and then Michael. What about all this uh, federal money? All this federal money that As far as, you know, Jim, the rules are still coming out with the ARPA money. Okay, so we shouldn't count on it this year. No, I, I you know, and we've got $40,000 in ARPA money in that neighborhood. So, you know, it's it's not like, you know, you hear some of these towns have half a million dollars. But it's based on population and all. And so the, the money that we get on the ARPA funds is not real significant. Yeah, and yeah, and, and you know, there, it's earmarked for um, um, water and sewer projects. It's earmarked for public safety. Um, you know, general maintenance. It's not. Okay, one other simple question. Um, we have on page nineteen. It gives all our funds, and the last few articles address. Called highway capital investment, is that what it's called? But that doesn't appear. The name of any of our funds here. I, I think probably the heading is highway budget surplus funds, Jim. Yeah. That's the capital. It should be named correctly, you're right. Yeah, but the research John now talking about funds for paving roads. And then there's and then there's the paving. Funds for paving roads is one fund. The uh, capital fund is the next one, the highway budget surplus funds. Oh, okay. That's the cap that, it's re it should be named correctly. Okay. But this is 12,000 or whatever that you're asking for now. That's really going to go into the paving. Yes, so it's dedicated to paving. Okay. Right. Thank you. There's nothing that says our surplus funds couldn't be used for paving, but we cannot use our paving funds for anything else. Hang on, Michael, do you still have a question? We'll come back to this. Uh, yeah. Could you clarify uh, repaving what town roads? The town roads that have pavement on them now with potholes. Existing. So the existing pavement is, is um, um, the bottom of Maston Hill has pavement. Post office sale goes a half a mile of pavement. Bottom of Buffalo Farm has pavement. Thank you. Thank you. We're not looking at paving all the roads in Granville unless you really want to go for $2 million or so. Or yeah. no more. more. That wouldn't even do it. It's about a million dollars a mile or something like that. Robin? Yeah. Robin? That, that's, that's another thing that has been brought up in the past. Why do we even have pavement? Maybe we should take the pavement up and just 
Yeah. Have gravel. Yeah. Well, how expensive would it be? I know they chew it up and reuse it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it would be a lot cheaper than paving it. But, um, you know, that, that's another, another big question that we would probably put to the voters. Should we eliminate the paving? We would get, we do, actually, we would want to get pricing on what it would cost to do that first. But we haven't seriously looked at that. But we can. Uh, yeah, Jim? Just a little history on that. The difficulty with running gravel down there was dust control. On the steep hill there, the reason that was done was because it gets washed for you really quickly. People accelerate and go back to it. But the village is an important thing, so dust control, and then you had to put calcium chloride on it keep the dust on <coughs> and that's carcinogenic. So that's why originally the decision was made. Mm -hmm. And the reason they did the bottom of Buffalo Hill was just because, well, we got it on the other two. <laughs> <laughs> Any other? All in favor of calling the question, say aye. 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 The question is, shall the town of Granville vote to increase the equipment fund for the town, oops, I'm sorry, that's the next one. Shall the town of Granville vote to increase the highway capital investment fund in the amount of $6,000 for the purpose of repaving town roads? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Article five passes. Can move motion six? Article six? Yep. Article 6 reads, shall the town of Granville vote to increase the capital equipment fund for the town constable in the amount of $1,500? Uh, discussion? Judy? I'd like to know why. <laughs> this equipment fund was started last year. This is for replacing uh, this equipment in general, but mostly uh, Two-way radios. Uh, two radios. Currently, I have two two radios in my vehicle. Um, one was used when I got this vehicle. The other one's even older, um, probably 15 years old. Maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, to replace both radios is like six grand. So uh, they don't. Keep. I've been trying for grants for years, as I mentioned in my statement there. But because it's a personal vehicle, they won't give me a grant to replace those. They originally gave me grants when we got those radios. But that was the 12 to 15 years ago. My main radio that I use to contact ESP is the one that's bothering the most. Um, my primary radio is the one I need the most, and I probably can't even wait another year to replace it, so I'm trying to work something out on that. But that's why we need that equipment fund. I was trying to, trying to spread it out so we didn't have to have funds all at once if possible. So. Any other questions on the question? What about considering repair? These are old radios, they're obsolete in a sense. Um, especially now with the uh, uh, narrow banding. I think they are narrow bandable, but the problem I'm having with this particular radio is a, uh, a uh, shop that works on this type of even anymore. That's my biggest issue is the brand I happen to have right now, nobody's selling it anymore. Any other questions on Article 6? Um, Victoria. I know that the, the fire department often kind of looks to wealthier fire departments for used equipment that they're giving away. Have you, is that an avenue you can try and look for? That's, I would look at that and the same problem that, same problem I'm having, they're replacing them because of similar, similar reasons. So, um, and most people are uh, not replacing them right away just for, because of cost. But, but I have looked into that avenue and trying to find something. Motion to call the question, or is there any other discussion? Call the question. Second. Got a motion to call the question and a second. And the motion reads, shall the town of Granville vote to increase the capital, the, the, the equipment fund for the town constable in the amount of $1,500. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Article six passes. Um, 
Somebody want to move? Thank you. Second. Second. Article 7, shall the town of Granville use the Conservation Commission Capital Investment Fund in line item 613 of approximately $3,200 for improvements to the playground behind the town hall and or improvements to Granville Commons? Uh, is there discussion on this? Uh, I, Mike, I saw you go up first. Why? This money, this money was in, is in the purview of the Conservation Commission that hasn't met for a couple of years. So we put this on there just to free up that money to either do some work on the playground back here or to do some other work down at the, at the commons. So either or, it doesn't have to be. Just, it's, just, it's just freeing up the money to select work, so the select work can decide where the best use would be. Without a conservation commission, this money is just locked up. So, um, you know, the, the reason we put it on the question is just to free that money up and uh, be able to use it. Okay. And, the play, and the playground. Insurance carriers um, told us we can't have a playground unless we get some bad surfaces underneath it and the proper um, stuff so that so that. It's a safe place, you know. Taking most of the swings off in there, um, you know, we're not quite sure where the playground is going to go, whether it should just be totally brought down, you know. It will be on select board agendas whenever we do, so stay tuned and come to our meetings. Uh, Christy had a question, and then Marilyn, and then Judy. Yeah, I mean, here when we got put in, I was thinking that we have to keep it in good working order for the insurance can't have a and you're not I'd love to see the Conservation Commission get um, reformulated and get a meeting together and say, we want to do this with this money. Even if you guys approve it, we would take their lead on what they want to do with it. But they haven't met for a couple of years. So rather than just leaving it there, we thought it would be a good idea to um, be able to use it for our conserved park area or the playground. Judy? And then uh, Richard. Oh, did you have a question? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can this 3200, in spite of the wording of the article, can it be voted to be put toward loads? No. Okay. Uh, Richard? Yeah, does anyone have any idea as to the utilization of this playground? I have never seen a single child. I got at least three. <laughs> and I every time they come off the bus, they ask if they can play. Oh, okay. And we have to say no. And when it rents it. And it's not just them. Like, the Granville Hancock bus has multiple kids coming off of it every day. Yeah. So the reason you don't see kids is because they can't. They can't. Because it's unsafe under the swings and everything. Commission did put the Granville Commons, that was the Conservation Commission's project, so we're trying to keep money there so we can continue to mulch the blueberries that were put in years ago and the tree rings and stuff so that people
people can actually utilize all the fruit, fruiting stuff that was put in there. I'd like to call the question. There's another question on the question. This money, and this money is, is remnants from Irene, from, the, from back when we had the buyout. There's a motion to call the question, and it's waiting for a second. We've got a second from Victoria. Uh, no further discussion. Article 7, shall the town of Granville use the Conservation Commission Capital Investment Funds in line item 613 of approximately $3,200 for improvement to the playground behind the town hall or and improvements to Granville Commons. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 7 passes. Have fun. It would be great to have a playground. Yes. Article 8 reads, shall the town of Granville borrow up to $100,000 to be paid back in no more than five years to reopen Buffalo Farm Road as a class three road. Uh, discussion? Doug? Back after Irene when Buffalo Farm washed out and uh, it was applied to FEMA to get money and other people to probably correct me, um, they determined that there were a number of issues with reopening Buffalo Farm. There was a class two road, which is a higher um, uh, grade highway than the class three road, which is the rest of all of our roads here. Um, and there is a slide that has taken place there. There was work that was done decades earlier that may not have conformed to FEMA regulations. And FEMA at that time said, we're not putting a million dollars into reopening that road. And that's where we got the Butts Road alternate project primarily out of that, along with some other money that came from FEMA. Um, I've now heard from people from um, emergency services, people that are up on the hill, people that don't like to go five miles through the mud when they can get down to Route 100, to see if we can open that up. It's, a one, it's about a quarter mile between the barricades. I've had a couple of contractors look at it. It's probably to follow the uh, Orange Book, which is the Bible for the state of Vermont highway projects to be in the neighborhood of perhaps $100,000 to get that open as a class three road. And we put it on the question tonight just to see if people are in favor of trying to reopen that uh, Buffalo Farm Road. Yes. <laughs> uh, Doug. My concern, and I love that one, I reach a lot of people who come and say you're not, so I'm just concerned in the planning part of this, are we doing it internally? Are we having an engineer do this? And what is the liability if we don't do it right again and someone gets hurt or someone? I, I just, I'd like to know all that stuff. I, I, I talk, I, I've gone through FEMA. Yeah. I was afraid they were going to claw back some money. Right. They said, no, it's over. You guys can do what you want. I've talked to the engineer in, at, at the state for this district, this pump. Just follow the orange book yeah. um, and do the proper drainage and do, do what needs to be done for a class three road and you're good to go. I've had a couple, you know, I'm not sure whether we can do it for $100,000, to be honest with you. We may be able to do it for more or less, I'm not sure. It's a quarter mile, you know. Um, it, it definitely um, would, would need to be followed by state specs. Um, one thing I do know that if there was a problem with it down the road, we probably would not be any eligible for any kind of grant money. Uh, Victoria, it was next. So I was on the select board with Norm can probably help and Cheryl too on my memory, but it came down to about four million dollars to actually do the engineering and the proper thing to bring it up to a class two road. So I guess it would be less, but I see a very large discrepancy between why we didn't open it and we let the townspeople vote that, um, and why and how how we can do it for a hundred thousand safely and without. Not that I don't, I would love to see the road open. I don't think it's feasible for 300 people to pay for that. Norm, Norm can enlighten us. Yes. Uh, 
I would like to speak on this topic. I have written some notes. Oh, oh. wait a minute. Oh, no. It's a violation. Is it a violation? Yeah. To this? <laughs> My first question is how many times can I glance at <laughs> Yes, right. <laughs> Once. It's okay. If there's no objection, you can read. My name is Don Marcel. For those of you that don't, don't know me, um, I was on a, a chair of the slide board for 12 years here in Granville. I've been a uh, FEMA coordinator since uh, 1998 through 2021, so that included three major flood events, including Irene. So I had a lot of work to do on the roads. I dealt with the of the state and, and worked with our roads uh, folks, road commissioners at the time and so forth. I do have a lot of background on the slide. First of all, as uh, Bruce said, that particular place on Buffalo Farm Road has been sliding way before I read. We've repaired it a number of times. If you can go out there, you can see the blocks down over the hill now that we used a number of years ago to try to repair it. So FEMA determined that there was a pre-existing condition there, which there was. It slid previously. They weren't going to touch it in terms of providing any money for us to redo that road. But what we did get them to do was to fund extensive geotechnical, hydraulic, and core drilling to tell us <coughs> what the subsurface was under that road. And we completed that with a firm, we contracted with a firm called Geo Design. Um, and Geo's design did all of that work and all the analysis, the hydraulic studies and so forth. And then they came to the town, I remember, and they said, this thing is way bigger than what we thought it was when we started. The whole hillside is sliding above the road, at the road, and below the road. It's all sliding, and it, it had been sliding previously as well. They were pretty impressed with that. <clears throat> so they did come up. We did finally get a final report. We had a special town meeting about all the details on this on September 13, 2013. And, and Geo Design is here and presented and did a, other presentations. But their uh, report said it was going to cost between $1 to $2 million to fix that slide. There were three slides, but the other two were smaller. This is the one we're talking about tonight, is slide three, the other one. $1 to $2 million because there's a ledge under there, the slanting of the ledge, the way the water comes down off the hill, rides down the ledge, you know, softens the soil above it, everything slides downhill, the whole business starting above. If you go out there, you can see the cracks above the road where it starts. So it's a major problem, one or two million dollars. Well, FEMA was not gonna help us. If FEMA didn't help us, the state wasn't gonna help us financially. How they helped in this town come up with one or two million dollars? You've got to stabilize the sliding first before you build the road on top of it. That was the idea. And so what Geodesign said, you've got to dewater the slope above, you can use these soil nails that go into the ledge yeah. horizontally to hold the slope. Then maybe you can think about building a road on top of that that will hold for a while. Well, given that advice, the select board uh, decided that at that time that there's no way we could get that kind of money to raise it on our own. Uh, and so therefore, we would close the road, bring it down to a class four standard and put the barriers up. Now, I do live on Buffalo Farm Road. So yes, I enjoy the peace and quiet more than it was before, I'll admit that. But also, it's an inconvenience to me for damn sure, because I can't just go downhill and get to Route 100. So uh, it goes both ways for me. But I've been watching that slide closely since Hurricane Irene is sliding all the time. It's going down a little bit more every year. The original, I looked it up today, the original width along the road was 350 feet that the slide encompassed. It's now at least 400 feet. I was out there the other day looking at it. It's all the way up to the upper barriers that we built uh, to stop traffic on the upper end. So the whole thing has gotten bigger. It's still sliding. It's getting worse. The worst spot on the road, just by eyeball, uh, I think the grade of the road now is slumped down to six feet below the actual grade that we have to bring it up to to make it consistent with the ice. So that's a pretty big deal. And it continues to slide. 
Now, I don't think $100,000 is going to do a darn thing to help this slide. Uh, because you can't just go out there and put gravel on it. I guess the idea is I haven't heard any plans, we haven't seen any designs uh, for this hundred use of this hundred thousand dollars. I guess the idea would be we get a whole lot of gravel, we get a whole lot of rock, we put it into the road, and we can certainly make the last three roads on top of that that will last for a number of years. Who knows how long? But when you put weights on a slide like that, it makes it go fast and slide faster. That's the way it's always been. Um, so you put that kind of added weight on the road, it's going to accelerate the slide. You haven't fixed this, the major problem underneath, which is going to be extremely expensive to do. So as I say, you can build a class three road over there. We can use it for a while. Either the next big storm or just annual increments of that full hill slide, sliding down uh, is going to ruin your road or you're going to be continually making repairs. So I think there's a lot better uses in this town that we talked about this evening for $100,000 than going out there and doing this in public. Thank you. Thank you. Any, uh, yes? My name is Brad Wynn uh, from Buffalo Farm itself. Um, I've been hearing conversations this evening about, about what's needed to improve our roads. And personally, coming out of Rochester and coming down Town Line Road, there actually is a very distinct line in that road between Rochester and Granville, and I, and in the road conditions in Rochester, because of the treatment of the roads, I guess the gravel quality is uh, quite superior. I would think that if this town wanted to invest in anything, that just maintaining and building the roads up to par with our neighbors to the south, and creating much more solid driving experience for those moving around with us up on the hill would be a primary uh, objective, rather than trying to put a lot of money and then what Norm just said, chasing, uh, chasing money, uh, we'll be doing that for years and years. So I would say that based on the conversation tonight, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on the roads that are already in operation, whether it's paving the lower part, the costs that are increasing there. I think that maybe borrowing money to improve the roads that are already existing would be a uh, much more prudent, pragmatic approach to uh, the situation. So. Thanks, sir. Yes. There's one house below us on Buffalo Farm Road. Uh, we are the second house from where it's closed. And the house below us, which is not quite 20 years old, um, they have had to put in supports because that property is still sliding. The engineers have said that the whole mountain is sliding. I expect our house to slide down the street. <laughs> I, I know people have said things, oh, you like having a park there. Yes, I do. But I also don't want to see the town throw away a million of hundred thousand dollars and then just have to chase that money uh, down the hill again. Um, you know, it's, it's an inconvenience. We're, we drive the farthest than anybody except for the vacation house. Um, but we're willing to put up with that. Yeah, we've become accustomed to it. I'm, uh, everybody finds it inconvenient, I know. If it's just going to collapse again, I just don't see the point. Marilyn? I, I just want to say I also looked at the, that old PowerPoint presentation from 2013 with all the geo design information and the quotes at the time that Norm was saying were, you know, one slide, uh, or all, you know, two slides had two concepts, but one slide was either up to one million or two million. Um, and the other big cost one was slide three that was anywhere from two million to three and a half million to stop, depending on the concept that was chosen. But the thing is, that was 2013, so I imagine that would be 10 million today with all the costs. So, I mean, how many years of $100,000 would take this town to get enough money in mass to fix that so it doesn't hurt anybody or it doesn't slide when someone's driving on the Uh, Travis was next, and then Tracy. Um, so we've been going all around for 11 years, so we've gotten pretty used to just not using it. So I don't see the sense of fixing it. Just let's just keep 
keep going around the fence, the rows that we have. Tracy? I'm Tracy Wynn. I'm at 1137 Buffalo Farm Road. I'll take this off so you can hear me. Um, in 1978, we named that hill Slippery Boot Hill. <laughs> and in 1998, after that flood, we named it just Slippery Hill because it wasn't just our boots that were sliding. After Irene, we just call it the landslide. And um, it is leaking from way up. There are seeps way up. The whole hillside is moving down, as you've heard. How do I know? Because I'm one of the proud owners of the landslide. <laughs> I would highly recommend the town not waste its money. Thank you. Judy. I really appreciate hearing from the boys in the norm and telling you a couple of old farmers. Can, <laughs> Judy, can you st stand up again? Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a motion to call the question. And there's a second from Victoria. Uh, and the question is, I'll stand up. Uh, shall the town of Granville borrow up to $100,000 to be paid back in no more than five years to reopen Buffalo Farm Road as a class three road? All in favor, say aye. <laughs> All opposed, say no. No. Okay. <laughs> Article 8 fails. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Article. Okay. I'll, I'll let, let, people... let them leave. <laughs> let them leave. <laughs> Cowards. <laughs> Article nine. Article nine. Shall the town of Granville vote to appropriate $500 to the Corner School Resource Center of Granville, Vermont, in support of its community programs this year? Any discussion? All in favor of Article 9 say aye. 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 Opposed? Move Article 10. Oh, I move Article 10. Okay. <laughs> Article 10. Yeah. Shall the, <laughs> I know. Shall the town of Granville vote to accept exempt the Moss Glen Grange from property taxes for five fiscal years beginning July 1st, 2022 and ending June 30th, 2027? Is there a question? Is there yes? All in favor of Article 10 say aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 10 passes. I'll move Article 11. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Article 11. Shall the town of Granville vote to permit the operation of cannabis retailers and integrated licensees subject to such municipal ordinance and regulation as the town select board may lawfully adopt and implement? Uh, yes? I just have one question. Yes? Do we permit anything else? And if we say yes to this, does it open us up to the zoning and permitting of other things by the select board? Now, this is just a question that has been on many towns, um, uh, town, town warnings, um, just to allow retail and cultivation primarily. But it does not open it up for any kind of zoning. Yes? My name is Bob Reedy, I live on Town and Road. The, um, one of the things that happens under the cannabis regulations is the town has to opt in for retail sales. 
If they don't do anything, it means no retail sale takes place. The town specifically has to offer and hold a vote as to whether retail or cannabis takes place. As far as growing and wholesaling, <coughs> we don't need the town's permission for the way the regs are set up. So it's just for the retail side of the cannabis operation, an integrated life. So if I were to take, there's a, a segment called the tier one. If I were to be a tier one cannabis grower with an integrated license, I'm allowed up to 125 plants outside, 1,000 square feet of grow space interior, inside. If I want to go for an integrated retail, it involves a lot more, a lot more money, trust me, in that I can now cultivate, process, package, test, and sell. So there's, not, there's a lot that goes into it. Whereas a wholesaler, if I were to turn around and say it's a tier, tier one wholesaler, okay, I'm growing it, I'm cultivating it, I'm sort of packaging it for sale, but it's wholesale. So that the individuals may take it under their own brand or package it under your own name. So there's a lot of ways to do it. The town has to opt in for retail sales. You can't, everything else that doesn't require the opt in. I still need permits from the state and licenses from the state in order to do that. But the only section that requires the town where they opt in is the retail sale of cannabis establishment. Thank you. It's great to have another farmer in town. <laughs> uh, any other? Questions for Bob? Richard? I'm not, I'm not quite sure whether it's just like a liquor license that would have to be acquired. I didn't understand the question because I couldn't hear does the, does the town have to, again, and now a retail operation wants to do that, does the select board have to agree to a license? No. 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 The, select, the only thing that the select board gets involved in is say, yes, we're going to have retail sales, or no, we're not going to have retail sales. Well, that's my point. Well, it, it sounds like that if, if we agree to this, then somebody could go out to the state and get the license. Okay, the, the way it's worded here, the regulation and the regulation. But right, I think. Well, if I could just chime in quickly. Sure. The, no, I'm the, sure. Yeah, the question part is the town is voting to permit that operation. Boom, that's it. And then whatever uh, the select board deems they need to permit for, they will, according to, in, in, am I right about this? But, but, this but, it's, but, but it's, um, right now, we have no power over agriculture. No. 
Okay, so this would be the same kind of thing. If, if, if we voted to allow it, then it would go right to the um, retail. Okay, so this is worded in a confusing way. Well, it, should the legislature come back, I think it's the way it's worded that way, should the legislature say, oh, the towns, you can do this and this and this and this, then we could, but as of now, we don't have that ability. No, and one of those things that's happening is the CCP, which is Kansas and Cold Board, is still really kind of shaking a lot of right. these things out. When you look at the permitting, it was supposed to start to happen early in May. There's been two issues. Two. Now, legal sales are supposed to start place technically October 1st. They're really shooting for October 22nd. That's not going to happen if so people don't get to the period here. You know, it's an agricultural crop. I need a certain amount of time for it to grow. Yeah, I can grow inside. But there's money involved and everything else. And if it turns around and you're only authorizing two a month, and how many months do we have left? Will the legal sales take place? You know? But this is strictly under Act 164 for retail sellers. Uh, there's a motion to call the question. Second. Judy seconds. Uh, the question reads. Shall the town of Granville vote to permit the operation of cannabis retailers and integrated licensees subject to such municipal ordinance and regulation as the town select board may lawfully adopt and implement? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 11 passes. And Moving 12 and seconded. Okay, so these are kind of books. Shall the town of Granville vote to authorize property taxes to be paid to the treasurer as provided by law in four equal installments with due dates being August 17th, November 17th, February 17th, and May 17th? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And uh, somebody moved Article 13, did I hear? Yes, yes. Shall the town of Granville vote that overdue taxes will bear an interest rate of 1% per month or fraction thereof for the first three months thereafter and thereafter 1 and 1 half percent per month or fraction thereof from the due date of such tax pursuant to 32 VSA? We don't have to do this every year, this article. I, all in favor of 13 say aye. 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 Opposed? You should have told us that before we put it on. I know. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I said so when you were selectman, we oh, that's all. Okay. All right. Next year we won't. <laughs> Next year. Thank you. Melissa's here. Yes, right. Um, Fourteen. The following, for everyone's information, this is an advisory, non-binding article. There won't be a vote. Um, you can express your opinion. Fourteen. Shall, shall the town of Granville vote to support the Granville Select Board's adoption? of a telecommunications ordinance as recommended in the 2019 town plan and pursuant to 24 VSA chapter 2291 enumeration of powers 19. And uh, Judy, go ahead. I, you said there won't be a vote? No. It's not even the stand, it's just It's an advisory vote. What's that? There's, it's a non-binding article. I know, but there would still be a vote on it. There yeah. would? Yeah. I didn't didn't think we voted on nine non binding articles. Yeah. They're just advisory I suppose we could. <laughs> sure, let's vote. If you all want to vote, that's fine. This this was a petitioned article. Um, I've done a little research on it. The um, most of the towns that have a telecommunications ordinance do have zoning. Half of the towns in the two rivers district, there's 27, 28 towns in the central Vermont area. More than half of them have no zoning, um, just like Granville. Um, the, the, uh, there hasn't been a telecommunications ordinance over the last 10 years in this region. Um, I understand people would like that. At this point, the state takes on all telecommunications towers and they go cross agencies with Agency of Natural Resources, Forest and Parks, Health, they all are involved. And, they're really the ones that are the permitting entities. So, um, Judy. Yep. Uh, I know there are rules of state and federal regulations, but each town is different. Each 
each town is allowed to have their own town plan. And by the same token, I would say we should take advantage of the right to have a telephone board. This was this this was put through the planning commission a year or two ago, and the draft never went any further because it didn't get approved by the planning commission. So that's why I was petitioned to come to the select board and say, okay, select board, come up with a telecommunications ordinance. It could be very simple. It can be very simple and it could be very complex. But um, again, you know, I, I think in, in Granville, we're going through a tower right now. I can give you a brief <coughs> update on that. Um, the town ordinances do not, do not hold a whole lot of weight in the state hearings from in front of the Public Utility Commission. Judy. I think we should take advantage of every means we have to direct the development in our town. That's why we have a town plan and we have other ordinances and and and, and it does give us more say in the Public Utility Commission proceedings. Okay. Is the, is the language for what this is somewhere in this package of information so we would actually know what we're voting on? Judy? Is it, is it in here somewhere where we've been allowed to read it? It's next door. But, and but it's not, it, ha it wasn't, it wasn't, it's not in this room. It's not. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, you're asking us to vote on something called the telecommunications ordinance, uh, but we don't actually know what that it's is. It's of a telecommunications <coughs> ordinance. So the select board, you're charging the select board with coming up with a telecommunications ordinance. Ah, I, the, that I don't believe that this that was right this was never that. intended to take the ten-page draft that went through the planning commission that never went anywhere. That may be a starting point, but. Um, it, it never it never went that far. As far as, ord as far as ordinances go, it would go through the planning commission, then it goes to the select board, there's a whole process, then it goes to a public hearing uh, before it gets adopted. So, you know, there's a lot of bites to the apple. Yes. Anyone else want to speak to the question? Well, I was going to ask uh, <laughs> just a procedural question from the chair. Um, this is a non-binding article, meaning whichever way we vote, it's more of an advisory situation from the public, correct? That's how, okay. Yeah, go ahead. So I'm just, I'm just wondering if this, so we're just trying to find out if people want to have an ordinance in town. I thought, thought we'd already kind of voted on that. I don't know why this keeps coming up in this dispatch. This was a legally petitioned article. Uh, Judy, oops, <laughs> have Judy one more time. Then we, there's a motion to call a question, but go ahead, Judy. I just want to point out that the ordinance that we're voting on is not Yep, there's a motion already to call the question from Jim, and someone seconded it. Did someone second? Oh, Judy. Oh, Judy, okay. Uh, so just reading the question, shall the town of Granville vote to support the Granville Select Board's adoption of a telecommunications ordinance as recommended in the 2019 town plan and pursuant to 24 VSA 2291 enumerations of powers, all in favor of Article 14, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. I believe the nays have it. Can we have a paper ballot? Show of hands. Show of hands. Yeah, right, sure. Would you like a show of hands? Okay. All in favor, raise your hands. Okay.
Uh, all against it, say, uh, raise, raise your hands. hands. Oh, sorry, I know. I have to, right. Do we have it now? I Right, Art Article 14 fails to transact any other business to come before said meeting. Anybody else? Christy. Um, I would just like to, in light of the budget that we passed through the school and the fact that this is a bus stop and this could be a facility that got rented out to events and things once COVID is over again and stuff like that, that back on article, um, I was, anyway, fix this. <laughs> okay. We do have children, Inter imaginary and real play on a plane. Another, another good thing to, to know, and I thought Chris, you were going to bring it up, is that the uh, school budget is down 40 cents. So you're going to see a lower tax bill. Uh, anybody want to move to adjourn? Jim, second. All favor adjourning. Goodbye. See you next year. Thank you.